All right, so we're going over Tana's survey. If you don't know, Tana just put up this survey on Reddit. It's on the screen right here. I'll put a link in the description down below. I'll see if I can't get it over here for chat so that they can follow along too. Um, Tana went ahead and um, put up this survey, which is really interesting stuff. I had a chance to glance at it. Here, I'm putting this over for, for chat. Uh, control V, I think that's how that works. I don't know. There we go. Okay. And what it is, is it's just a list of all the things that you like, you don't like, all this sort of stuff that we can bring this to the developer's attention. Tana is one of the hardest working content creators in Marvel Strike Force. I kid you not. He's in the JSON files. He's beta testing characters. He's watching every bit of media that comes out. So thank you, Tana, for once again doing some work. What's crazy is... Mr. Hargrave put out a similar thing like this on his Discord server. It was a list of stuff that people could vote on for what was the most important thing they could do so we could get one change in the game. And then he sent that over to Valley so Valley could put it up on the uh, Envoy server. And then, of course, Cerebro ghosted him, as usual. Or at least it seems like that, Cerebro, if you're watching this, buddy. Hey, any word on what happened with that? We'd at least like a comment. Anyway, Tama, Tana gave us this one, and let's go through it, and I'm just gonna go through and vote. I don't want you to vote the way I'm voting, okay? I just want you to vote, vote with your heart. Vote with your heart, okay? Um, actually, whoops, I already got this window open. Let's just switch over to this one. Okay, so this is Tana's Marvel Strike Force survey number one, assuming that we're gonna have more surveys. So let's just go through these questions and see what Tana came up with, if they're any good, and, and uh, how I feel about it anyway. Okay. How many days into the game are you? I am less than a thousand, way more than 750. So that's that's me, that was easy, okay? Which raid are you doing daily? We are doing Doom. Okay, so <clears throat> is this Doom, Doom Strike 1 or what, what is that? It's not Strike. So we're not, okay, I see. I think this is supposed to be the the strike one and then doom one with difficulty one because it, it's not like he has the difficulties for oh seven seven point four seven point four. okay these are difficulties all right so we're in doom 1.0 if this was 1.0 it would be a little bit more clear for me so okay but we're in doom 1.0 we almost hit 60 percent today so good job team way to go pirates um how much time do you spend daily on Marvel Strike Force? I am three to six hours, but that's because I'm technically a content creator and I'm always looking at stuff. And that's counting when like something's said in game and I have to go in and research it through like msf.gg or something. So, so I'm a little bit above. I bet most people are gonna be one to three hours and that's where you should be is one to three hours. I would like to see Scopely uh, get this closer to two hours or less. I really think that a mobile game should never be more than two hours. And I'm okay with pushing that boundary because I'm doing stuff on stream and stuff. But yeah, okay. Which of these takes up the most time per day for you? Oh, we've got rate them one through seventh. First through seventh, okay. Which of these takes up the most time per day? Well, not RTA, not anymore, man. I, I do my two RTAs and that's it. And it's all blitz after that. Arena's taking up a little bit more time than usual right now. Um, I'm going to grade this on what I normally do. Then we got blitz. Blitz is just ridiculous no matter what. But when, I'm, when there's not an event going on, then it's not so bad. We've got raids. Raids is probably what I'm spending most of my time on. Dark Dimension, I beat DD4, so that's not a big deal. But when you're doing first runs, that's, yeah, I could spend an hour a day on Dark Dimension if I was, you know, hardcore. Alliance War, not so much. I'm getting those attacks in pretty quick. And then Blitz during events. Oh, we've got two Blitzes. Okay, see, I would have liked to have him put Blitz and Blitz during events is right next to each other because I, I was thinking this. I was thinking this while reading this. Okay. All right, so I'm thinking the most time for me is probably right now is actually probably raids. Oh, no, 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 no. No, the most time for me right now during during the event is going to be Blitz, and then it's going to be raids. Um, I'm spending a lot of time. Gosh, this is kind of tough. I'm going to say... When doing first runs, I'm going to say Dark Dimension, and then it's probably 
doing some blitz rotations, maybe. And then, gosh, Alliance War and Arena, this is kind of close. And then RTA now. But two weeks ago, RTA takes the top spot. And it was so annoying because you're just sitting there watching TV with your, like, Doom scrub team and just hitting auto. It was horrible. You know, like the Phoenix scrub, the Phoenix and four scrubs and just hitting auto. It was terrible. Blitz during the events is the worst, says chat. Okay. Um... All right, uh, let's see. Which release method for characters do you like the most? A uh, Blitz release is actually really fun, but it's unfair. It's unfair, but it, for me, it's great because I'm like right in the middle, and if I work hard, I can usually get to another tier, and if I just screw off, I actually fall down a tier. So for me, it's really good, but I'm probably the minority in that. Um, you know, the the OG players and the whales and stuff, they're, they're probably liking Blitz release also event milestones those are really good that's that's pretty good i kind of like like the i mean they're not like the shang chi one wasn't so th this one isn't so fun right but it's okay strike pass up oh. strike pass is automatic seventh place sorry i hate that straight to nodes i i like it when they go straight to nodes and i can just farm them you know like i'm having fun just going in and farming what who is a multiple man or whatever Milestones like Gold and Emma, those are really good. Event campaigns like Death Pool, though that's my number one. Event campaigns like Death Pool, I really enjoy those. Raid release, those are good. I miss the the Deadpool, the Juggernaut raid releases. I think Thanos had one or something back in the beginning. I came in like right at the end of the Thanos one, I think. Um, because I don't remember the Thanos one, but I remember people talking about it, so I must have missed that one. All right, let's see. I like the Emma Milestones. Then I like the uh, Shang-Chi events. Then straight to nodes. Uh, oh, gosh. Gosh, these are all kind of a tie, man. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote Blitz release as sixth because I know that I'm, I'm in the minority. I'm, I'm putting my vote out there for you guys, okay? Putting my vote out there for you guys. All right, which of the following teams recently released did you like the most? astonishing x-men is the shit yo shadowlands is was super fun i'm glad i built that team not a lot of value outside of war but i'm glad i built that team because they beat like they beat lots of stuff in war right now infinity watch is a super powerful team but they're no fun absolutely no fun it's a cookie cutter team it's the new black order oh man chat's just scrolling by uh heroes for hire fuck heroes for hire i hate that team that's seventh Screw them. New Warriors. Um, yeah, New Warriors is pretty good. We haven't really got a, got a grip on them yet, though, so it's hard for me to vote for that one. I think, I think we should have just left that one off of the list for right now because we've only got access to one and a half of them right now. X-Factor was okay. There wasn't anything wrong with X-Factor. Kind of a fun team. You can use them on a lot of different stuff. It's a medium level there, maybe a fourth. Secret Avengers. Now, I didn't build the Secret Avengers, but I have played, played them a little bit, and I played against them and stuff, and they look pretty good. I mean, they're, they're super OP and everything. I wonder if their stats weren't so high, if they'd be as much fun, but their kits are okay. I'm digging it. I'm going to give Astonishing X-Men and then Shadowlands. Infinity Watch is a no-fun team, even though they're super powerful. I'll give New Warriors down here because I don't really know them that well. X-Factor and Secret Avengers. You know what, I actually kind of like the X-Factor team a little bit better because they don't use a lot of negative buffs. And so it's kind of just like, how do you get these guys to crit fast? Who's gonna be their fifth? It's a lot of fun. Secret Avengers is, eh, I guess maybe I just don't have enough time with them. I don't know. All right, let's go. Which of the following characters would you like to see buffed, reworked first? Spider-Man, well, duh. Bullseye, hey, he's garbage. Merc Sniper, why are we putting minions on this list? Kingpin, Kingpin, <sighs> Kingpin, Namor, like who cares, dude? Namor's the Aquaman knockoff and Aquaman is garbage. Whoops, I didn't mean to check that. Aim, Infector, again, a minion. Shield operative, a minion. Vision, Vision deserves his day in the sun, but he kind of, he had a minute, you know? Spider-Man, not so much. Iron Man, of course, he's the least legendary of legendaries and another minion. What is this? This is garbage. Tana, what are you doing, man? It's like, which of the following characters, choose two, would you like to see buffed, reworked? Spider-Man, Iron Man, or seven pieces of shit no one cares about? 
Come on, dude. Seriously, this isn't even a question. Okay. Um, which of the fo- oh, Dang it, I'm clicking all over the place. Too much coffee today. Uh, which- And I'm hitting my microphone. Oh my god. I had double X caffeine today. It's like this new coffee. I'm jacked up today. All right, coffee's done, let's focus. Which of the following teams would you like to see finished or reworked first? Choose two. Oh, finished or reworked. Okay, so we're gonna have a, a bit of a diverse question here because some of these teams might be really good. Like the new Warriors. The new Warriors are super good, right? But we need to see them finish. Same thing with Secret Avengers. But then there's other teams that are reworked. This is this should be split into two questions. Tana, this was a mistake. You should have split this into two questions. And you'd have a list of teams that are that are four, three, or even two characters. And then you'd have another list of characters that need to be reworked. So Young Avengers just bore me to death. I don't care about them. The hand's been in here forever. I'd like to see some of the characters that they could bring out. But it's mostly minions right now. So I'm not sure if that's worthy of it. Ravagers? Dude, we can't rework the Ravagers. That's that's fodder for content creators. We just make fun of the Ravagers for being so OG and so crappy. They're at the bottom of everybody's roster, so please don't work rework the Ravagers. No, man. Ultimus Cree team. Cree already got reworked. Wakanda. Boom. I want Wakanda to work. I'm tired of looking at Okoye and Mbaku not getting any love, man. Rework Wakandans. That should be like hashtag rework Wakandans. X Factor needs a fifth. Yeah, but they're kind of fun do, putting in a different fifth right now. Secret Avengers. I'm I'm willing to let them roll as a three piece right now. I, I kind of like mixing and matching. Same thing with New Warriors. It's going to be fun figuring out four and five. Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, I put a lot of work into my Guardians. I kind of would like to see them beefed up a bit. That might be my pick. Baron Zemo Hydra. What's wrong with Baron Zemo Hydra? They're already a great team. They don't need to be reworked. And Supernatural, we're throwing in Hela, and that's fine. I think he's putting Supernatural on here because he wants Blade. That's what he's doing. He's hoping people will vote for this and bring in Blade. Sorry, Tana. I don't, I don't care about Blade. Cool character. Be fun to have him in the game. You're not getting my tick. Okay. What is your favorite game mode? It sure as hell ain't RTA. Why is that even on the list, Tana? Is it just so that you can show that people are not going to vote for RTA? Alliance War is actually my favorite game mode. It's just a shame that it doesn't pay out. The investment into Alliance War isn't worth it. Hey, here's an idea. Sprinkle in like some gear 16 shards or some blue ISO for like a defensive victory. Ooh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? People would start buying those defensive characters if you got something for a DV. Uh, how about Blitz? <sighs> When there's a really good character release on Blitz, it's it's kind of okay. It's kind of okay. Dark Dimension's fantastic. I like Dark Dimension. I just wish there was a way to get more out of it. Like, I wish you could replay Dark Dimension and get, like, one gold orb every time you beat it or something. I don't know. Maybe not. That might screw up the... I don't know. That might screw up the currencies. But something... I just, I just liked a reason to replay it. I'm clicking all over stuff. So far, it's Alliance War. Arena... No, not with the cookie cutter teams. No, not with the cookie cutter teams. I played Mirror Match of Black Order for a year. Then there was like a two week reprieve where it was fun. And then we're back to cookie cutters with the Infinity Watch. So no, raids, raids are okay. As long as they keep creating new raids, they're okay. What is your least favorite game mode? That's RTA. I don't need to look at the rest of the list. What are your general feelings about Marvel Strike Force currently? I am very unhappy. I'm very, very unhappy. They are not listening to us. They only seem to care about the whales. They're not trying to bring in a bigger player base. There's bugs and bugs and glitches and stupid mistakes that are totally prevent... Oh my... Okay, I, I could rant about that for a while, but we got to move on. Have you previously spent on Marvel Strike Force more than $50? Yes. I think you probably should have raised that to like $100, Tana. I think the $50 mark, like there's probably a, a very small percentage of people that are true microtransaction only, but usually once people break the seal, they just can't stop. And so I think you should have raised that to $100. Uh, let's see. Oh man, my chat's kind of popping off. I can't, I'm sorry, chat. I can't keep up with you. I got to get this going and try and keep the video short. Are you currently spending on Marvel Strike Force? 
if a really good and cheap offer comes i like this good one tana good this is good this shows that i'm willing to spend if you're gonna give me a valuable thing to spend on i like that that's good what is the thing that frustrates you the most out of this list red star store and orbs well i mean duh that frustrates everybody but they're not going to fix red stars they're not going to do anything about this maybe if you split this into two things like red stars and red star store right because they might make adjustments to the elite store but they're not going to fix red stars they have been silent on that and when they are absolutely silent on a topic for this long the answer is no okay they touched it up once we're not going to get a rework red stars are the way they are hopefully they could release more red stars you know increase the currency but i think they like it right where it's at i don't think we're going to get anything on that so i don't even know where i'm going to vote on that how do i move this thing how do i how do i shift over to ninth okay all right i think i got that uh ultimus store and orbs yeah ultimus orbs store sucks man so do the orbs it's just a recycle fest there's nothing in there to buy it does need to be touched up that actually might be a little bit more important game crashes that's I, not necessarily game crashes but but bugs and glitches for sure i don't know what, what we're that's like i'd like a rephrase there maybe he's got it further on the list bottlenecks for leveling characters sorry guys that's a part of the game that's just bottlenecks are just going to be a part of the game and it sucks um I think they're slow to react to some of these bottlenecks like the g13 like the mini uniques the miasma and stuff they th that should have been fixed but they're waiting on that they're waiting on that until they open up gear 16 once they bring in gear 16 then they'll start throwing out the mini new uniques because they're not going to release one bottleneck before they have another bottleneck to catch players uh blue iso randomness i don't know about that i i didn't i mean that doesn't seem to be an issue for me that actually might be you know what i'm gonna like uncheck the okay i guess i can't uncheck these can i uncheck this okay, let's go there and let's go there we're gonna move some stuff here too much screen time that's that's kind of that's kind of my number one thing right now well no let's see what happens we're gonna keep that number two right now i don't know uh characters being released not working correctly number one right there that's the bugs that's the bugs right there so we can put game crashes down here my game isn't crashing too much although it did it yesterday it froze up on me blitz rewards i am pretty unhappy with blitz rewards but it's not such a big deal alliance centric gameplay uh war raid for highest gear yeah that's pretty frustrating they're putting a lot of pressure on alliances unnecessarily and i don't like that orb farmable characters such as symbiote spider-man emma castro that's just a part of the game guys that's just how it's gonna work they do they do need to bring these characters out of the orbs faster. Okay, Symbiote, Spider-Man, and Emma need to come out of those orbs. They, they've been in there too long. Okay, and then what, what was the 10th one? Characters being really, uh, what one did I miss? Bottlenecks for leveling. Okay, actually, that's a little bit more important. We're gonna put this here, we're gonna put this here, and we're gonna put this here, I think. Okay, there we go. Uh, which of these Marvel releases are you most wanting to see character releases from 2021 and 2022? Oh, I see. So we got like movies or TV shows coming out and we want to see characters come from this. This is totally Tana right here. This is totally Tana hoping that we're going to vote for the characters he wants to see come. Or he's maybe he's just curious about what the community thinks, but Tana's always pushing character releases that he wants. Um, Loki... I don't know who we'd bring out a Loki. Shang-Chi, I don't care. Eternals, that's pretty interesting. Spider-Man No Way Home. We already have like like Doc Ock from Spider-Man and stuff. Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, that could be interesting. Thor Love and Thunder, that could be interesting. Black Panther Wakanda from Forever, that might be neat. Maybe like a MODOK or something. I don't know who's going to come out of Black Panther, but that'd be neat. The Marvels, I don't care about. WandaVision, no thank you. What If is very interesting but that could lead to some really weird stuff i don't know i'll give it a check hawkeye i just watched the trailer for hawkeye i don't know miss marvel forget about it moon knight i don't know that's gonna be like sub characters that i'm not familiar with could be interesting but i don't know if i want to waste my tick on that she hulk if it pushes a hulk team then yes whoops don't no not moon knight venom 2 and Morb morbius there we go morbius okay there we go this is kind of like a anything. 
<laughs> where's the where's the movie with Gambit? Where's the movie with Gambit and Rogue, Tana? Where's that? Because I know that's what you're looking for. Where's the next Blade movie, huh? It's not on the list? I guess they're just not coming out. Okay. Uh, page two. Here we go. How do you feel about the following game modes on a scale of one to five? Blitz. Ah, I'm pretty unhappy with that. It could be worse, though, because we've seen RTA. So we're going to give that a two. RTA is terrible. Go away. I almost want to give it a two because they are letting us bypass RTA now, right? Like, I almost want to do that. But I want to make sure that they never introduce anything like RTA again. So I'm going to give it the very unhappy. Arena. Ah, the cookie cutter situation with Arena really upsets me. So there we go. Alliance War. It is what it is. They're they they're trying some changes. I'm not sure I like their changes. Uh, it could definitely be better. It could definitely be worse. Dark Dimension. I'm... You know what? I'm going to go ahead and just like let them know, hey, just don't don't fuck with Dark Dimension too much. Sure, there's some tweaks and it could be better, but I, I got to give them credit where credit's due. It's a pretty interesting game mode. As long as I can get into it, wink, wink. Um, as a very general rule, do you prefer PvE or PvP game modes? Tana, what the fuck does this mean? As a very general rule, what does that mean? as a very general rule like are we what, why do you even say this what does that mean okay because then you go on to like you you go on to highlight new character campaigns raids challenges dark dimension for pve content pvp content is rta arena alliance war blitz i like half of these and i like half of these and what does general rule mean and why is it a very general rule as opposed to a general general rule? Uh, this doesn't make any sense. Tana, clear this up. Come on, man. What? You should just... Because see, the thing is, campaigns are okay. If, you know, when, they, when we get new and challenging campaigns, they're okay. Raids, they're okay because I'm doing it with my team. It's kind of fun. Challenges are garbage, but they pay out okay. Dark Dimension is, is good. I've said that before. I like Dark Dimension. You know, these are just kind of okay, and this is pretty good. And then PvP, RTA sucks. Arena's in a shitty spot right now. Alliance War isn't paying out, but I like the game mode if they could get the payouts right. And Blitz. Blitz is unfair. So... <sighs> okay. And then you forgot your end cap there. Whatever. Okay, that's... All right, I'm just gonna say PVE, I guess, but it's it's so like, it, that's kind of a convoluted question right there. Which of these game modes, game, which of these game modes additions would you like to see most? Tower Gauntlet, fuck yeah, absolutely. Series of increasing difficulty fights to reset once a week or month and has random components, absolutely. That's getting a tick right there, choose two, okay. World boss, work together with everyone on the server to take down one opponent, getting better rewards when it's defeated based on total damage over the few days it's up. That's pretty cool, but usually those world boss things take so much tweaking to get just right. And then if it's like a national holiday somewhere, like just the world doesn't do it. So I'd rather see like an alliance boss. Oh, hey, look, alliance boss. Okay, same as world boss, but just for your alliance. That's, yeah, that's it right there. An alliance boss sounds fantastic. A danger room where you can test characters in the game for fun with no rewards from your own roster or a rental offer. Okay, a lot of people are gonna say fuck this because no rewards, right? And here's the thing, we're getting practice mode in war. So forget this one. My tick is going to Alliance boss so far. Last stand. Survive as many waves as you can. Rewards once a day with all game mode buffs active. War, offense, defense, raid. That sounds like a lot of fun. It does. But that's my number three pick so far. A lot of fun. Sounds like a number three pick. RTA leagues. Go fuck yourself. No way. No. Anything with RTA. Go away. I mean, I guess... Competitive RTA with a ladder and leagues to climb in. I just, no, I don't want you to make RTA competitive. It's a shit game mode. Don't try to improve it, just delete it. Cut your losses, Scopely. 10 man mode. Can use 10 characters from your roster to fight waves with all game mode buffs active. That's very interesting. 
I definitely take a look at this. That sounds interesting. Still not my top two, but it sounds interesting. Story mode. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not playing for story mode. Replay old event campaigns and story missions with no energy but no rewards. Again, no rewards. No one's doing that. No, no. Okay, comic challenges. A series of missions based around storylines from comics that give you preset character characters and are like puzzles. Okay, I'm willing to look at that one, but that's like fourth on the list, maybe fifth on the list. Sounds intriguing. I like the puzzle idea, you know? But that would be way too much work for Scopely to do. They'd never do anything that work intensive because they'd have to constantly be updating that. Because like one content creator is going to get it, post the video or like seven videos are going to come out simultaneously probably. And then everybody's just going to be like, oh, I click this one and then this one and then this one. Thank you for spoon feeding me. All right. So there's there it is. Ta Tower Gauntlet Alliance boss are my favorites. <clears throat> we already have Grand Arena coming. Thank you, Angel. We have Grand Arena coming uh, soon. So... I doubt they're going to put any other of these game modes in, but those are great game modes to let Scopely know. Okay, and it looks like the final question. Which of the bottlenecks affect you the most? At most, you can choose four. T2, <laughs> T2 ability materials? Who the fuck is having a problem with T2 ability materials? When I first started the game and ended that honeymoon period where they give you so much shit, you're just like leveling up to like level 15 all in one day. Like, maybe, like, for a minute did I run out of those blue mats. But, like, no. No. <laughs> no, like, okay. Um, maybe, okay, you know what? I think, I think there was some people complaining because you get to a point in raids where you don't get blue materials anymore and you're just getting, like, purple and, and, and orange ability mats and it's hard to come back to those... T2, so maybe that's a thing. I just never experienced it. We'll see. I think that they've kind of done some things to alleviate that. It's not such a big deal anymore. We'll see. I, I, I guess there, it, it needs to be on the list. There's probably some things, and I'm just not dealing with it, right? Orange unique items, i.e. my miasma. Why doesn't this come pre-checked? It just come pre-checked. Gold. Everyone's going to check that. So I'm just going to hold off on that because I personally am not experiencing a gold issue right now. Could be because we just had that gold calendar with 675,000 gold every day. But I, I have an abundance of orbs I'm saved up and, and I got a couple million in the bank. So I'm just not going to check that yet. I'm probably going to come back to it though. T4 ability materials. For this, this is an issue for me. I am so out of the T4 mats. Yeah, it looks like chat's having some gold too. Uh, let's see. Character shards. Um, this one needs to be split up into multiple tick boxes. Uh, like, okay, like, like character shards from node farms. Like, people could complain if they're stingent on those. Like, sometimes it feels like those drop rates are being nerfed or something. Like, like, what do they call that? Ghost nerfing or something? And then, um, character shards becoming available sooner like like making characters farmable sooner i'd like to see that like this is kind of ambiguous right here just character shards i'd like to see that question worked on so in, in survey number two tana work on on something like split that up a little bit make it less ambiguous blue iso green iso um be sure, Tana, be sure to write blue ISO 8 materials because people might confuse this with ions. So uh, blue ISO isn't such a big bottleneck right now. It might be in the future, but in the future they'll change it. But right now it seems, oh, you know what? The blue ISO bottleneck for people who can't get into the proper doom rates right now, that's bullshit. That is just not cool at all. If they need to sprinkle some blue ISO into another game mode like war so that smaller alliances who cannot compete in, in Doom raids can just go hard in war and just be a war-centric team and, and get some of their blue ISO. Like, make it where it'd be better if you were hardcore in raids, but you can still get it in, in war. I, I think that would be a way to go. 
I might actually check that box. Let's check it for right now. Green ISO, they opened up the door on that. That's fine. I'm happy with that. Red stars, go fuck yourself. They're never going to make a change to that. Orange gear catalyst, I'm doing okay. I hit a, a little bit of a bottleneck once in a while with the catalyst. I've just learned to make sure and farm them with my extra energy and I don't do too bad. Purple gear, fuck off. Nobody's going to have a problem with purple gear. You, you get over that hump eventually. If you're having a problem with purple gear, just wait a month or two. I, I guarantee you, you're going to have a surplus of purple gear. Purple unique items, same thing. Training mats. Now, a lot of people have problems with training mats. I tend to just skip characters that I don't need on my roster, and I do just fine with training mats. T3 ability materials. Same thing with purple gear. I have an abundance of T3 ability materials. Um, maybe other people are experiencing some sort of a bottleneck that I just missed. I just never had a problem with that. T14 and T15 mini uniques. I don't have a problem with those. Blue ions. That might be a tick box for me. Yeah. But you know what? I'm going to give this one out to the out to the people there. I'm going to give my vote to you guys because I hear more people are having problems with the training mats than the blue ions. So I'm gonna go there. All right, next, what do we got next? Oh, we got more, wow, this thing is intense. How do you feel about the following Alliance War changes? Oh, this is my bread and butter right here. Okay, let's dig into this. Energy changes, four energy at start and two every two hours afterwards, resulting in globals being down with an hour of high efficiency. Okay, Tana, you leaned into this question, buddy. This is not fair, okay? You're reminding people of the negatives and you might be missing some of the positives, buddy. You can't put that kind of thing into a question. You can't lean into it like that. You gotta come in totally neutral when you put these questions up because you're skewing the answers. You're reminding people, hey, this is the bad part about this. But you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. Results in globals being down within an hour with high efficiency war teams, yeah. Um, I don't care. I really don't care. You know why? Because our alliance doesn't give a crap about war and yours shouldn't either. I show up late to war because I don't want to mess around punching down into flight decks. I leave those for the smaller people in my alliance to give them some good war attacks on. Uh, and then I have my alarm set on my phone for 15 minutes before war ends to make sure that I've used up all of my energy and done my part so that uh, I'm efficient in war for my, my team. But we don't really care. We're just going in there, getting our attacks done, getting our currency. Nobody cares if we win or lose anymore because the difference between a win and a loss is negligible. So this doesn't matter to me. I am, I am indifferent to this outcome. Uh, five boosts per player with a restructured cost per boost. Uh, boosts don't really do anything. I mean, come on, they add some deflects in there. I know that's adding some strategic value. Uh, I know I'm super into the minutia of little str strategies and stuff. Like I do look at what team I'm boosting. Like I, I like to boost the mercs because I know that that's gonna help keep things from happening, like them dropping below 50% or having uh, some sort of an ability block hit on them or something like that. So I'm looking at teams that I boost. But the boost just doesn't seem to do enough, so I don't really care. I'm kind of indifferent to this too. And adding more just means, I mean, sometimes I go into war and it's like, somebody's like, hey, you know, uh, boost the med bay or something. And you look at your med bay and it's completely yellow. And you're like, okay, it's boosted. Like some more boosts? I don't know, I don't think it's, I don't know. Can attack four teams on each side of a room at a time. I like this, I do like this. That way, I'm not sitting there just waiting for somebody to finish, you know, some long at like an Emirata, Emirata battle that just runs out to like four and a half minutes. I like this. I'm happy with this. Uh, I think that was a good move. Do not attack marker that captains can place. Okay, so this is a this is the thing here. This is fantastic. They're looking at how to help alliance leaders and captains to better organize their alliance. The problem is people just won't give a fuck. They're just, if they're not attacking where they should be, they're not gonna care about attacking where they shouldn't be. That's the problem, okay? You can then like point out to the people, hey, you attacked a room that we said not to attack and you can kick them out of your alliance or something and feel a little less guilty about it, right? 
but this doesn't really do any good. I'm glad they're trying, so I am gonna give them the five. I'm happy that they're putting it in. It's better that it's there than it's not. But I, I've been an alliance leader. I know how it goes. This isn't gonna change much, right? This is just gonna give us ground to stand on to kick people out. 10 defensive slots per player. Ouch. I don't think anybody really likes this. I think this is a little bit soon, right? I don't think there are enough players with a wide enough roster to support this type of situation. I don't think they've nurtured us in the direction of building wide rosters enough for this yet. I think down the road this is going to be a good thing, but all this is is more of a game mode that people are pretty meh on right now. You know, you've got some go hard alliances that are going that, that are they're, they're trying hard in war and they, they work at it really hard. This is just going to make them spend more money on defensive teams, more money on widening their already fat rosters. And then for like people who are just unlocking war, this sucks for them because they're already fielding like one or two defenses and it's all shield guards. And now it's just more shield guards. Right. This is too soon. This is too soon. I don't think it's a very good idea just yet. I think a year from now, yeah. But this year, no. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go two. I, I don't think it was a great choice. War ready characters receive additional stats, uh, plus stats for characters at ISO level four and above. So here's the thing with this. This has to come. This has to come into play. It's a way that they can push ISOs without um so like we can't get into dark dimension five without iso blue right so you have to do doom raid you can't do doom raid you can't get iso blue you can't get in dark dimension five and that's just exclusive okay it's the haves the have nots that sucks this you can still play in war you're just going to be better off if you can put the iso on here and, and, and it's iso four green by the way so it's totally doable for anybody here's the thing i don't like being forced into it but i like if i manage my resources well that i can benefit from that so if this was iso 3 i would give this a 4 because it would be pretty easy if it was iso 5 i would give this a 2 because it's just stupid hard you're going to be putting isos on characters you just don't want to and iso 5 is getting expensive but if it was but since it's iso 4 i'm going to give it a 3 i'm going to give it a 3 i wish it was iso 3 and then i could vote it as a 4 and i would be much more happy with it new practice mode i am so twitchy clicky today new practice mode verse your alliance mates defenses while there isn't an active war fuck yeah absolutely this is awesome i love it this is great for me it's great for other content creators and it's great for people who enjoy theory crafting it also gives you something to do when you're bored right you're not getting any rewards but it's another thing to do now that could be said about like doing extra rta attacks or something but this is one where you can practice in war and we've never had the ability to practice against characters with war buffs so this is going to make great content for content creators which will in turn help out the community because then they'll see better builds for their defenses and their offenses in war so i think it's great this is absolute win for everybody across the board the only negative thing that could possibly be said about this is there's people who don't watch content creators and who don't want to practice. And if that's the case, then Scopely spent their resources and time making this mode when they could have been doing something else. That's the only thing. And, and you know what? Forget those people. Sorry, guys. We, we can't be that nitpicky. Wow, this thing's is still going. Which of the following quality of life upgrades would you like to see first? Choose four. That's a good list of stuff. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Okay, here we go. Claim all for Blitz Milestones dailies. Well, that seems kind of bland. Like, who cares? Claim all for Blitz Milestones? I kind of like clicking through that list and going, gimme, 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 gimme. Right? Like, I just run through a Blitz rotation, go there, and click it like 15, 16 times, whatever, however many milestones there are. I'm okay with that. This, this doesn't need to happen. I don't want them wasting their resources on that. Download all assets button. 
yeah this should come to the game this is a thing that needs to happen not enough people know that you can go into blitz hit the show stats or hide stats button it's where it shows your characters and they're all standing there in their real form not not their uh profile pictures but they're all standing up like they're gonna battle it out or whatever that cool looking pose you go to that and then you just cycle through all 35 teams and then go make a sandwich and you'll see the little loading bar going across the bottom of your screen and that that updates all of it that downloads all the the things after a patch um, I would like to see that. I'm just not sure if I want them wasting their resources on it. Open 10 times Blitz gear orbs. I don't care. I don't open Blitz gear orbs anyway. I've got hundreds and hundreds of them just stacking up. And that is probably going to be important whenever I do need to open those, but I don't need to, as I don't care. Sim challenges all at once. You're turning three button taps into one. Unless you're doing like everything on the list, like all the different challenges, just collect all, then maybe. But if it's like you go into the first one and hit sim all, go into the second one, sim all, eh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think, Tana, be sure to like change this next time around so that it says like all the different challenges times three each or whatever, you know, make it so it's not ambiguous. Retreat from raid battle leaves the fight as if you never did it. No, absolutely not. I do not want this in the game. And here's why. You're going to have a bunch of try-hard people in your alliance that want to one-shot the boss node and they just keep redoing it and redoing it and redoing it. And and they're they're going to they're going to just annoy the fuck out of you cuz you're like you're like screw it, Tom, just two-shot the node already, you know? Tom's my raid lane buddy. Um and and I don't want to I don't want to sit there and wait for him. Tom wouldn't do that to me though. But other people will, and that's just terrible. Now, if it still uses up an energy to retreat and come back in as if you never did it, maybe. But I ha I'd have to think about that strategy. I don't know. I just don't like this one. I don't think that's a good idea to go there. I I'm okay with the raids as it is. I like that it's like you got to get this right or you pay the penalty. I like that it's tough like that. One click button to remove entire team. Oh, fuck off. Come on. We could do that ourselves. We don't need that. Replay and match history support. What does that mean? Are you talking about being able to watch who attacked into your war defense? Because if that's the case, fuck yeah, I want that. Although we're kind of getting that with the, um, with the practice mode in war. Like we won't be able to see other people do it, but like I could have my fellow streamers record it into my defense or i can record going into their defense or i could ask my teammates hey could you set up this specific team so i can practice it um and see how it goes so in a roundabout way we're kind of able to do this and i'm not sure if i want to waste my tick mark on that you know uh let's see keep raid results posted after completion just like blitz yes absolutely we need that information Notification sent to player if they have not joined an open raid in a given amount of time. Ooh, never thought about this one. Nice one, Tana. This is a good one. Here's the thing. People don't have notifications turned on for Discord, and our alliance leaders are messaging them throughout the day with Discord, and they're not seeing that. They're just going to turn off their phone notifications for the game, too. I do like this, though. I do like this. I, oh man. I don't think it's going to be as effective as we would like it to be, but I think it should be in the game, man. I think it should. I know that might be annoying to some people, but as, as an, as an ex Alliance leader. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to come back and click that. I'm going to give it a click right now. I'm going to give it the tick. Okay. Ability leader ability for leaders and captains to assign raid lanes To members in game where game only lets that member access the nodes on their designated lane. Are you fucking kidding me? Yes. 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 I want this so bad. Oh my god. This is my number one. I tick it twice Are you kidding me? I never have to listen to those whiny bastards So-and-so took my lane. What are you gonna do about it? They're in my lane again. They jumped in front of me. They should be kicked up. Fuck those people. 
okay? Stop going to your leadership and bitching about it. What? My seven-year-old and my five-year-old can communicate about whose turn it is to play with their Spider-Man action figure. You fucking idiots cannot figure out whose lane it is. You can communicate with each other in-game, through Discord, through Facebook. You can fucking mail somebody a letter. Don't bitch to your leadership about it. This would end that. Oh my God, I want this so bad. Oh, I want this so bad. Fuck all the rest of it. I want that alone. I mean, we put people into rooms and, they're, and they, and they uh, you know, work in that. Their defense stays in that room for war. Let's do that for raid lanes. Oh my God, I want that so bad. Tana, you're a genius, man. Ability to preset raid start times. Tick, yes, thank you. That would be fantastic. It, it would kind of suck if like your raid keys ran out, right? Then what happens? I'm not sure. Maybe it just starts as soon as you have the raid keys to do it. But yeah, that's that's good. That would be very helpful. Oh, I'm up to four now. I hope these others suck because those were pretty good. Allow the search for a hero shards even when they have a star upgrade available. Nah, I don't need that. If you're not ranking up the character, then is it so important you farm their shards? Oh, come on. I've got a ton of characters sitting at the bottom with like, 700 shards sitting at four stars, right? I haven't been farming them. They've just been getting their stars naturally. I'm not gonna rank them up. I'm not gonna farm them. So, no, nah, screw that one. View and, okay, a little typo there. I think it's view an entire player's roster when viewing their profile, especially for Alliance members. This is good, I like this, but let's just have uh, Pimp Toxie and, um, and who's the other guy that's running uh, msf.gg? Chat, help me out here. Um, just uh, just get the API up and running so that we could have that, I think. And I think that would be okay. Ty J, thank you. Yeah, Ty J. Oh, I did that one on my own. That wasn't even chat. Yeah, Ty J and Pimtoxy. Let them do it with msf.gg. Get the API up and running because that'll open up a lot more things. I'd rather just have a third party do it because third parties... You know, those guys at msf.gg are working for us, okay? Yeah, they're gonna make some money doing it, but they play this game, they know how it works, and they're providing great tools for us as players. So, you know, head on over to their website, by the way. Uh, they got a Patreon account and everything. You wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to donate to them. Allow for a default battle speed so the game doesn't start on 1x when the game is loaded. Yes, I gotta admit, I fucking hate having to tap that. I hate having to tap that up to three times speed all the time. It is a little annoying. Um, yeah, but that's like number five. That's like number five for me, so I can't take it. See campaign event energy on home screen. This is a good one, but it's like number five or six for me. This is so like when you're in the death pool campaign, you're gonna see the death pool campaign energy, the regular energy and the ISO 8 energy all there on the home screen so you know what's going on. You don't have to go into the event to see it. That's a good feature there, but I just don't think that's as important as some of the other things here. Gear inventory in game. Yes, I also like this too, but again, that's like number five or six for me or even seven. We, we got the gear amount number on the screen. That's good enough for me. I'm, I'm good with that. What I would like to see, and I know this is such a bitch thing, I would like to see on this list um, three buttons for auto, auto basic, and three times speed. Instead of having the fold out menu, I don't know why they did it as a fold out menu. I love having auto basic and thank you Boundless for giving us auto basic. I just don't know why you guys made us tap the screen twice. It's such a little bitchy thing to complain about, but it's true. Like I just, I, I'd like to see it on the list just to see how many people go for this. Uh, submit form. Okay, cool. By the way, Tana, please share these results with everyone. I wanna see this. I'm so curious to see what the rest of the community wants with this. So if you guys haven't gone into, you can go to Reddit, you can do this. I'll have the link to this Reddit uh, post in the description. Be sure to give it an upvote, get it to the top, get everybody voting on this thing. This is some good information. I doubt Cerebro is gonna look at this thing. Or if he does, I don't think he's gonna comment on it. He just seems to just ghost the community these days. Um, so anyway, let's, let's take a look at this. Uh, I hope we get some traction with this. I think this is a great idea. Tana, you definitely need to work on these lists a little bit. There's some little 
things that need to be maybe separated out into multiple questions or a little bit clarified on. But hey, buddy, good job on this. Thank you for getting this out there. Um, I do appreciate all the work that the envoys do for us. It is a shame that Scopely does not do more for you guys. All right, I appreciate you guys joining me for this video. I know it ran a little bit long. Wow, almost an hour. Jeez, I might have to edit this one down and cut out some of the fluff. Or I don't know, maybe I'll just upload it. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Remember, don't just have a good game. Be good to yourself and others too. Bye.